Good morning, boys and girls. I want to talk to you today about a man that Roger Hargraves called Mr. Cheerful. And Mr. Cheerful was exactly as his name suggests. He was always in a cheerful mood. Whenever he woke up in the morning, he had a very big, bright, sunny smile on his face. When he was eating his breakfast, he was smiling. Whenever he was having lunch, he was smiling. Whenever he was having his tea in the evening time, once more, he was smiling. And even in bath time, and of course, some boys and girls don't like bath time. Others do. But Mr. Cheerful, he loved bath time. And even at that occasion, he was sitting with a big, bright, sunny smile on his face. He always was in a very good, cheerful mood. And everybody loved Mr. Cheerful. In fact, he would probably have been the most cheerful man you ever met in your life. Did you know that Mr. Cheerful had a secret? Nobody knew about it. Well, not yet. And he kept that secret under his hat. One day, Mr. Cheerful, he went for a walk. And he walked past this lady. And her name was Miss Little Splendid. And she said to him, as he walked past, saying, Hello, Little Miss Splendid. She said, How rude. How dare you? Do you not know to tip your hat to a lady? Well, he blushed. He got embarrassed. Mr. Cheerful said, I'm very sorry, but um, I, I can't lift my hat. Why not, she said. That's very rude of you not to lift your hat to a lady. Uh, and he stuttered and he went on a little bit. And he, he, he then eventually, he said, well, it's because I'm not very good looking. And she said, but that doesn't matter whether you're good looking or not. It's rude not to lift your hat to a lady. So eventually he lifted his hat. And do you know what the secret was, boys and girls? He had three hairs sticking up out of the top of his head from under his hat. And she said to him, your hairs are not what makes you lovely. It's your smile that we all appreciate. And once Mr. Cheerful heard that, well, he regained his smile and he beamed brightly at her and he bid her good day, he put his hat back on and then to every other lady, he tipped his hat. He wasn't worried whether people looked at him with three hairs or not. He, again, was very, very cheerful and everybody, of course, loved Mr. Cheerful, as I have told you, and they all said hats off to Mr. Cheerful for letting his into his big secret. And boys and girls, I was thinking about Mr. Cheerful. Is the word cheer mentioned in the Bible? Is the word cheerful mentioned in the Bible? And the answer is yes. There are 17 references in the Bible to the word cheer. And what I want to do this morning is this. I want to introduce you to the real Mr. Cheerful. I have told you about Mr. Cheerful as told by Roger Hardgraves. But the real Mr. Cheerful is in the Bible. And his name is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. On three separate occasions, he said to his disciples, using the word cheer. And this is what he talked to them about. He talked, first of all, about forgiveness of sins. The Bible tells us on one occasion he was in a house in Capernaum. And there was a lot of people there. The religious leaders were there. The elders of the town were there. The scribes and Pharisees were there to listen to the Lord Jesus. You can imagine the important people were in the front row. And the Lord Jesus was teaching and preaching about the kingdom of God inside this house. And there was a large crowd. In fact, there was so big a crowd that nobody could get in through the door. Well, in Capernaum, there was a man. We don't know his name. He was sick of the palsy. That means he couldn't move his arms and his legs. He couldn't walk. He could still talk and communicate with his friends. But all day long, he just lay on his bed. And his bed was like a, a single mattress. And he had four friends in that town. And they wanted to get him to the Lord Jesus. So what they did was they carried him to the door. You could almost hear them saying, Excuse me, let us through, please. Sick man here. But of course, nobody budged. The crowd was so packedly together and they were listening intently to the Lord Jesus and they weren't really listening to what these friends were saying. So they couldn't get in through the door. Now they didn't give up. They didn't go home. They decided, 
We'll get them in another way. And in Capernaum, the houses were flat. They had a set of concrete stairs or stone steps up to the roof. These four friends somehow managed to get their friend on the bed of, of, of sickness up to the rooftop. They, they began uh, scraping away the, the, the clay and the straw. They, they be, made a hole then. And you could just imagine the people inside. The Lord Jesus preaching and teaching. And then all of a sudden, the dust begins to fall. And then bits of rubble and straw begin to fall. And you can just imagine the people looking up. What on earth is happening? And there's a hole opens up on the roof. This man, sick of the palsy, he's laid down into the uh, feet of the Lord Jesus. And the Lord Jesus immediately says to him, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. See, the first thing he talked about this man who was sick of the palsy was about forgiveness of sins because the Lord Jesus recognized that even though the man was sick, he had a greater sickness and that was the problem of his human sinfulness. And while he was sick of body, he was also sick of soul and the Lord Jesus was dealing with his soul sickness first of all for that's the greatest priority. You could be sick in your body and also be sick in soul and the greatest need is for your sin and your soul sickness to be dealt with. And that's what the Lord Jesus was doing. Well, immediately he said that. People were saying, who can forgive sins but God only? This man speaks blasphemy. That's what they were thinking, the religious leaders, the elders, the scribes, the Pharisees. So the Lord Jesus said to them, is it easier to say to the man sick of the palsy, son, take up thy bed and walk, or thy sins be forgiven thee, that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins? He said to the man sick of the palsy, Son, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man got up. He started to walk. He rolled up his mattress. He put it under his arm. And he walked out through the door. You see, that's the first thing that the Lord Jesus does. He comes alongside to give us cheer. He's the real Mr. Cheerful. And he talks to us about forgiveness of sins. Do you know forgiveness of sins, boys and girls? Can you lay your head on the pillow and say, it is well with my soul that all your sins, past, present, and future, are under the power of the precious blood? Do you know the Bible says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace? And I want to tell you, it's the greatest gift of all. It's even a greater gift than bodily healing, the gift of knowing that all your sins are forgiven, that they're under the power of the precious blood, and that you can sleep and you can have peace in your soul because your sin problem has been dealt with. Has your sin problem been dealt with? Have you confessed your sin? Have you asked the Lord Jesus to become your Lord and Savior? Do you know that God has put all your sin in the sea called forgetfulness with a big sign up, no fishing? He doesn't allow you to fish. He doesn't fish himself. He doesn't allow the devil to fish. Do you know what forgiveness of sins is? It's a promise from God never to bring your sins up again because he has dealt with them. He has carried them away. He's covered them over by the power of the blood. But let me tell you something else about the real Mr. Cheerful. He not only talks about forgiveness of sins, but he talks about facing the storm. See, one night the disciples were in a boat and they were crossing uh, from the Sea of, of Tiberias. They were crossing from uh, Tiberias itself over to the, the uh, land of Gennesaret. And, and as they were in the boat, there was a big storm. And it was very windy. And the waves were going over the side of the boat. And the disciples were afraid. They thought they were going to die. And, and, and the Lord Jesus wasn't with them. And they were really overcome with their fear. Uh, and then all of a sudden, in the fourth watch of the night, there was a person came walking in the waves, and it was none other than the Lord Jesus. They thought it was a ghost. And they were really, really afraid, petrified. And the Lord Jesus said, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. You see, by his presence and by his power, he, he came to them to where they were. He, he, he stilled the wind and the waves. And he gave not only peace to the sea, but peace to their hearts and minds. And maybe, boys and girls, you're going through a storm right now. Maybe you're um, feared uh, about going back to school. Maybe you're uh, afraid uh, about um, your, your, th this coronavirus that's uh, stalking the land. Maybe you're uh, uh, afraid because you haven't seen your friends and families for a long time and you're really, really worried, not only for yourself, but for them. Or, 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 or maybe there's something else uh, is disturbing you and something that's annoying you. Can I tell you that the Lord Jesus, is the real Mr. Cheerful, can come alongside by his presence and his power and he can give you peace, peace of heart and peace 
peace of mind. He said, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And let me tell you a third thing about the real Mr. Cheerful. Not only does he talk about forgiveness of sins and talk about you facing the storm uh, by his presence and power, but he talks about fighting um, the, the uh, world. Uh, uh, he, he says to his disciples, um, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Here's the real Mr. Cheerful fighting for the saints. You see, what does the world do? It wants to squeeze us into its mold. It wants us to take on board its advice and live according to its lifestyle. And, and of course, the Christian, the Lord Jesus said, in the world ye shall have tribulation. What does that mean? In the world, um, you're going to be hated and despised because you're a Christian, because you love me, because you bear my testimony, because you say that there is a God, you believe the Bible to be true, and there's a real heaven and a real hell, and there's a sin problem to be dealt with, and there's a Savior from all sin. And once you adopt that lifestyle and adopt that type of language, you're going to be hated and despised uh, by uh, teachers, by professors at university, by, by, by work colleagues, uh, simply because you belong to Christ. The psalmist said, uh, for my love, that's love for God, they became my adversaries. But the Lord Jesus said, um, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Uh, and he overcame it by his blood sacrifice on the cross, and we don't have to live uh, within its uh, counsel and its vice. We don't have to allow the world to squeeze us into its mold. Why? Because we can have our freedom and liberty in Christ. And I commend uh, to you today Mr. Cheerful, the real Mr. Cheerful is found in the Bible. His name is the Lord Jesus, and this is what he wants to tell you about forgiveness of sins, you facing the storms of life with him, and him fighting for you because he is with you and before you. He is behind you and beside you. And the Lord bless you today uh, as you meet the real Mr. Cheerful. Thank you.